Here is a Hampton Bay branded dehumidifier. This is a 25 pints model. I believe this is a Whirlpool product from the 90s. These are very good machines. This is something I picked up off the curb in I want to say 2019 or 2020 and I believe that it was in service up until it was discarded and I think it was only discarded because the bucket cracked and would not sit properly in the machine. This is one of the things I want to get to this summer. I want to put this back in service because I want to see how many years this thing will run before it has any kind of problems. It's already run quite a few. It's in pretty terrible condition. The coil is filthy. Let's take a look at the information first. It is in fact a Whirlpool product. 25 pints, R500, 6.2 amps. Model number is BHDH2500AS1. And maybe somebody who's good with this kind of stuff can decode that serial number and tell me what the date is. Or perhaps that's already been done. I'll try to look in the comments of the previous videos and and if somebody has already posted it, I'll put it in the box. So here's what the coil looks like. Yeah, <laughs> not good. Not good. At all. Lots of rust. I will never understand why this part is made out of steel. This should be made out of uh, copper or aluminium should not be a dissimilar metal that rusts and I think that we need to start painting this area to stop the rust because this is oftentimes where leaks will happen you can see that the rust is really starting to attack everything here and it's just not good um, this is so caked on there it doesn't even scrape off this is going to be a serious coil cleaning adventure here um, but anyways so I want to clean this thing up and I want to put it back into service and just let it run continuously and see how long it lasts. I think it might run for decades still because these were these were made very well. Whirlpool made a really good piece of equipment. So I am going to uh, reluctantly stick this into this dirty old coil. And we'll turn it, turn it back around so we can hear the compressor start up. We're starting at 62 degrees. This was on the floor on the other side, so it's pretty cold. It does have a reciprocating heating compressor. It's kind of interesting that the fan has never... Uh, or up until now has not locked up on this because that's usually the failure mode of these things is the fan bearings that lock up ironically a lot of the newer manufacturers have changed to using a ball bearing fan which is better in that sense but now the refrigerant always leaks out which is even worse 118.5 the volts 3 2 1 and the power switch or the humidistat is off. Well, that was anticlimactic. Classic reciprocating compressor sound. I heard the gas just get pushed out of the evaporator. It's amazing that that meter hasn't broken yet.
oil and head pressure according to the power draw and it looks like it is cooling. I just heard the compressor come under load. Compressor is very quiet. I can hear the gas going through there now. Not quite as much as I should, but we'll give it some time. The gas flow should become a fair bit louder than that. It's still building head pressure. It hasn't been running a while, so it might need some time. I think this is not as accurate as I hoped it would be. It's working properly. got the charge and it still wants to work. 5.5 out of uh, how many amps is it allowed to try? Out of 6.2. So this does draw more power than a newer one does. Well, it sure is a lot more reliable. And dehumidifiers are not cheap. I firmly believe that it's cheaper to run this year after year than to replace it with a new one every two or three seasons. The ambient temperature in here is allegedly 72 degrees. And we got high 70s coming out, which is what would be expected, just a little bit of a temperature rise. Alright, well, we have success. Now, I do have to figure out what to do about the bucket situation. I have the bucket, but it is in fact broken, it leaks, it's not usable. So, we'll have to figure out something else. I'd like to rig up something that would collect the water into a condensate pump so it can drain out and I never have to mess with it. The gas is definitely still there. Well, we'll definitely have a handful more videos to come on this because we're going to do a major cleanup on it. 
and then we'll have to figure out something to collect the water and then it goes into service I'm not sure that this is going to be powerful enough to, to handle the whole basement because this gets really wet down here but uh, I'd rather run two or three of these than a cheesy modern plastic unreliable fireball one 